In this lesson, we're going to learn about reading inputs and outputs from a graph. Let's begin by talking about what we know. We know that if we have an input and an output, that we can write that as an ordered pair, where we have the input first and the output second. The input is x, the output is y. So the input 3 and the output 1 could be written as the ordered pair 3 comma 1. And in turn, we could take that input and output shown as the ordered pair and plot that point on the graph. Because we can do that, the same is true for the opposite. We could begin with a graph that shows the point 3, 1, write that point as an ordered pair, realizing that that gives us the input and the output, and put that input and output in the input and output table. Today we're going to look at examples where we start with a graph and we complete the input and output table. Let's take a look at some examples. In this example, we have a line, and on that line are many points. Each point represents an input and an output. Let's use the graph to complete an input and an output table. We'll begin by drawing our input and output table, and let's look at the very first point on the left-hand side. We see that point, which has the coordinates negative 10, comma, negative 8. We know that the x is the input and the y is the output, so negative 10 is the input and negative 8 is the output. We've read this information from the graph and put it into our input and output table. Let's move along to the second point. We have the point right here. What are the coordinates of that point? Negative 8, comma, negative 7. The input is negative 8, the output is negative 7. And so in our input and output table, we'll record the input negative 8 and the output negative 7. Let's continue along to the next point. What are the coordinates of this one? This is the point negative 6, comma, negative 6. x is the input and y is the output. So we'll record negative 6 and negative 6 in the input and output table. Let's look at the next point. The coordinates of that point are negative 4, comma, negative 5. Negative 4 is the x, which is the input. Negative 5 is the y, which is the output. And so we record that point in the input and output table. At this time, I'd like for you to pause the video, continue along the graph, and record the remaining points in the input and output table. When you've finished, come back and we'll see how you did. Let's see how you did. We have the points negative 2, negative 4, so we put negative 2, negative 4 in our table, 0, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 6, 0, 8, 1, and 10, 2. I've completed the input and output table by reading values off of the graph. Let's take a look at another example. In our second exercise, we once again have a graph. And on that graph, there are points. Each point represents an input and output combination. The directions are to fill in the missing numbers in the input and output table. And here is that table. Notice in some cases, I've given you the input and I want you to find the output. In other cases, I've given you the output, and I want you to find the input. Let's work through these exercises together. And let's start with the first one. The input is negative 9, and we want to find the output. That means there's a point on the graph where negative 9 is the x, and something, the output, is the y value. We go across the x-axis, which is our inputs, and we go over to negative 9. We draw an arrow up to the graph, and we look at what that y value is. The y value, or the output, is 8. So that point is negative 9, 8. Which means, when the input is negative 9, the output is positive 8. Let's look at the second. This time, we have an input of negative 6. That means, on our graph, we have a point where the x is negative 6, and we want to find the y value, which is the output. 
the input x is negative 6, so we go across our graph where x is negative 6, and we draw our finger right up to that point. What is the y value at that point? The y value is 7, and so the point is negative 6, 7. That means the input is negative 6, and the output is positive 7. The next part is for you to try. The input is negative 3. Can you find the output? Please pause the video here and come back when you're ready. Let's see how you did. The input is negative 3 and we want to find the output. That means there's a point on the graph where x is negative 3 and we need to find the corresponding y value, which is the output. We go over on our graph and we look for the negative 3 on the x-axis. We draw an arrow up to the graph and we look across to see what the y value is at that point. The y value is 6, which means our point is negative 3, 6. So when the input is negative 3, the output is positive 6. Now let's take a look at the next exercise. This time we're told that the output is 5 and we need to find the input. Which input has an output of 5? Finding this is a little bit different. We know we have a point where the y value, or the output, is 5, and we need to find the x value at that point. Here's how I recommend doing that. Take a pencil, or a highlighter, and draw a line across the graph at 5. That shows you where the y values are 5. Where does your graph cross that line? At this spot right here. What is the input at that point? Draw an arrow down, the input is 0. So, when the output is 5, the input is 0. It takes a little bit of practice to get good at this, so let's try another one. In the next exercise, we're told that the output is 4 and we want to find the input. That means we have a point on our graph where the y value, the output, is 4. What is the input? Well, the output is 4, so we draw a line across our graph where y, or the output, is 4. Where does this line cross our graph? At this spot right here. Draw a line down, and that will tell you the input. The input is 3, and the point on the graph is 3, 4. Therefore, when the output is 4, the input is 3. Let's try another one. The output is 3, what is the input? Do you think you can find the input? Pause the video here and give it a try. Come back when you're ready. Let's see how you did. We're told that the output is 3 and we want to find the input. That means we have a point on our graph where the y value is 3 and we need to find the x. We draw a line across at 3 and we look for where it crosses our graph. It crosses right here. What is the input at that point? The input, or x value, is 6. Therefore, that point on the graph is 6, 3, and our input is 6. Let's try one more. This time, we're told the output is 2, and we want to find the input. See if you can find the input for this exercise. Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We know we have a point on our graph where the y value, or the output, is 2, and we want to find the x value, or the input. We draw a line across our graph, and we look where the line crosses through our graph. It happens at this point right here. What is the input or x value at that spot? 9. The point is 9, 2, and therefore the input is 9. Let's take a look at one more exercise for today. Here we have a graph that shows inputs and outputs. This shape is called a parabola. This time, we're going to look at some questions, but instead of having a table, we're going to look at the questions in words. Question number one. If the input is negative 4, what is the output? In other words, if we had an input and output table, our input would be negative 4, and we'd want to know what the output is. Can you find the output if the input is negative 4? Pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We go over on the input or x-axis, and we go up to the point. 
the point is at the 9 level and therefore the output is positive 9. Here's another one for you to try. If the input is 8, what is the output? In other words, if we had an input and output table, we would have an 8 in the input column and we'd be wanting to find the output. Can you find the output? Please pause the video here. Let's see how you did. We go on our x-axis, which is where our inputs are, and we go over to 8, and then we go right up to the graph where we find the point. We look how high that point is. That point is 9 high, which means the output, y, is 9. And so the output is 9. Notice what happened in exercise 1 and exercise 2. In exercise 1, we got an output of 9. In exercise 2, we also got an output of 9. Here, there were two different inputs that gave us the same output, and that sometimes happens. Let's take a look at another question that ties these pieces together. If the output is 9, what is the input? In other words, if I had an input in an output table, 9 would be in the output column, and I'd be looking to find the input. To do that, we know that we draw a line across our graph at 9, and we look for where the graph intersects that line. Notice that our graph intersects in two different places. It intersects here, and you'll notice it also intersects over here. Our graph intersects at two different spots. Let's see what those inputs are. We'll start on the left. Over here, the input is negative 4. Over here, the po input is positive 8. So therefore, my inputs are negative 4 or positive 8. I'm not really too surprised about that because I know in part 1, when the input was negative 4, I got an output of 9. And I know in part 2 that when the input was 8, I also got an output of 9. So it only stands to reason that when the output is 9, I should find both of those numbers. The input is negative 4 or 8. Here's one for you to try. If the output is negative 7, what is the input? In other words, if we had a table, the negative 7 would be in the output column, and you'd have to find the input. Draw your line across the graph at negative 7, and find where those lines intersect. Find the inputs. Pause the video, come back when you're ready to check. Let's see how you did. We draw our line across the graph at negative 7. We see that we intersect at two spots, here and here. Let's get the inputs. The first input is on the left. The input is 0. The second input on the right is 4. So the inputs are 0 or 4. And now you know all about working with graphs and with functions. You now know how to find the inputs and outputs by reading a graph and how to put them into an input and output table. Remember, you can find more about inputs and outputs and functions in Mr. Dory's Algebra Handbook, available at www.dorypublications.com.